All right, everyone, here we are with ticker symbol GNUS, Genius Brands International Inc. And before I jump into this chart, I want to say welcome to all my first time viewers and investors. Welcome to my channel and best for tomorrow. To all my subscribers, welcome back and let's jump into this chart. So Genius Brand had a run and needed to continue this run by breaking through resistance. I had stated if it didn't do that and it started to work its way down or in a sideways direction, the 50 day moving average would catch up to it. Well, the bears have also had some advantage here by bringing this one down, broke through the 50 day moving average, right? And then they also brought it back up because the bulls reappeared and brought it back up over the support line, but support got broken again, broke through the 50 day moving average. And here we are at 144, a little bit of volatility there, but after reaching a high here of about 152, it got rejected and brought down again so the bulls have some work to do here before this actually starts to fall and hit newer lows so i'm going to look at this very narrow and then we're going to talk about it a little bit broader so let's see here and i mean it only changes by a few cents what we're about to talk about and again yesterday's resistance level to today at 159 is super important i'll keep it in mind if this starts to run up and it breaks through the first resistance level this is another resistance level to keep in mind. If it breaks through that, it could hit newer highs and newer resistance levels. Now, on the broader spectrum of the bearish side, 140 is the lowest point reached in the day after falling, right? And being dominated by the bears, breaking through the 50-day moving average. And then, obviously, there was a slight recovery and it leveled off slightly above it at 144. But 140 is a key indicator that this could start to hit newer lows and newer support levels so keep that in mind but let's zoom in here and see what's the most important so 146 is the 50 day moving average i keep that in mind as well that lets us know on what side of the chart we're in right now we're slightly in bearish territory the moment the bulls break right over it and right back through it then you'll be back in bullish territory up here but right now we're slightly in bearish territory the tug of war will be interesting tomorrow to see who tries to dominate this chart now, the first support level is 143. It's only one cent difference, but if that gets broken through, this could be on its way down to 140, and it could quickly start to see newer lows, moving further away from the 50-day moving average in a downward direction. So that's super important to keep in mind and watch very closely. Now, on the other hand, we have what the bulls want. They want to break through this to start reaching newer highs and work their way back up to 159, and also the highest point reached in this bullish run previously from being in a very bearish state and rising up to 160. Now, before getting there, the bulls want to break through 153, turn that into a support and break away from that and move further away from the 50-day moving average of 146 in an upward direction. But if the bulls accomplish this, they broke through the 50-day moving average, getting back into bullish territory, and they broke through the first resistance level that can be turned into a support so they can break away from the 50 day moving average in an upward direction hit newer highs newer resistance levels and form a catalyst to build momentum and hit a rally of bullish direction and get deeper into bullish territory so that is most important resistance level right now in a much more zoomed in spectrum of this so the bulls need to break back through 146 to get into bullish territory and to continue the rally and hit newer highs, 153 is the first point that needs to be broken through and is the highest point in this slight recovery before this dip again. So 153 needs to be turned into a support so that the bulls can start to work their way up to newer highs. Again, I want to emphasize, pay very close attention to 143 and how quickly this stock is hitting newer lows and how it's reacting. Are the bulls even trying to reappear or are the bears dominating the chart as always if you found this video helpful and informative please do so and subscribe don't forget to click on the bell to turn on all notifications and not miss a single video that i post share this with your friends and community don't forget to hit the like button so you can let me know you watch this video and thank you guys so much for watching let's make some money at the end of this video, there's going to be a pop-up video and I go into detail about the S&P 500 index and how it's been rising up several points on scheduled dates. What happens on those scheduled dates, which are the dates that I circled here on the chart, 
and we're going to see for ourselves. Well, the S&P 500 index rises up several points, and by doing so, they're bringing up several ticker symbols, not all of them, but most of them up with them. And these ticker symbols are rising up 30 cents to $3 per share. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but per share that does add up. And one thing I am really big on is profits. If you put a dollar into the market and you get out with $2, you've made profits. You've done what the whole purpose of being in the market is for to maximize profits and minimize losses. And with the Federal Reserve pumping the markets on these scheduled dates, bringing the S&P 500 index up, also brings up individual ticker symbols with them. And again, 30 cents to $3 may not sound like a lot of profit per share, but that does add up. And like I say, profits are profits. So we're gonna look here at some of the dates so that you guys can see what I talk about in the video. And it's a weekly series. I wouldn't want you guys to miss out on it. Definitely click on the video as it pops up at the end of the video and check it out. But here we are with one of the first pumps in the scheduled dates pumps. So the first one, since the last time that they have released this, they released this on September 14th and the next one's coming up on October 14th, which is like a week from now. And on the 15th, they scheduled it. And as you can see, this is the 14th and the 15th is this big green bar and it rose up. So on the 14th, we were at around 33.84 and it rose up to 3420 i mean that's 40 points risen on the s p 500 index and that's creating that catalyst for individual ticker symbols to rise up 30 cents to three dollars we're going to look at another one here and the next one was on september 22nd and here we are on the 21st after falling from that last pump and the market had been falling and you could see that there is volatility on every single day of the market before the dates of the pumps, but on the dates of the pumps are the days that the most green happens. For the most part, not every time, but for the most part. But on the 21st, which was a Monday, it was rising up and it rose up to this point here. And the next one was the 22nd. So this is the last 21st candlestick and this is the first 22nd candlestick. And we were at 3270. This one rose up all the way up here to this point right here this was the last 22nd candlestick to 33.19 i mean if we go back we were at 32.70 33.19 that's almost 50 point jump here for the s p 500 index and again individual ticker symbols rose up with it and it created that catalyst a little bit before the anticipation and on that date it rose up now on this next pump which was a little bit different. There was a catalyst form beforehand and it rose up to these highs on the 28th of about 33.59. It actually dipped on the date of the next pump, which we see it here, which was on the 29th of September. And the next one was on the 6th, which just happened yesterday. And it actually slightly dipped. Now, not every time is these pumps going to rise up the market like we've seen here by a lot of points but it still rises it back up or levels it off from hitting newer lows and leveling off the market itself. Because if we look at the previous notes that I did beforehand, it was actually rising up with it. The volatility was there, but you were able to buy, like for example, how we bought here on the 15th and it rose up. Well, it's been falling and then very volatile here up and down. Beforehand, you can buy at the beginning of the schedule pump dates and hold a couple weeks and ride out several pumps and you were going on your way up but right now even as the market's going down it's a great opportunity to take advantage of the fact that the federal reserve is pumping the markets and there's an opportunity to make profits so here we are on the 29th and it fell to lows of 33.28 and it rose up to these highs here of 33.49 i know it doesn't sound like a lot but that's still a 20 point jump after dipping and recovering and then it continued to work its way up to newer highs now here on the sixth which on the fifth it started to rise it leveled off this is the last candlestick of the fifth coming up right now and we're about to see it here yes this is the last candlestick of the fifth and it rose up and all the way to the last candlestick of the sixth, it rose up another 20 points i mean we're down here 
and it ended up around here. So right now, something I'm noticing is that these pumps are creating less of an effect on the market, but it's creating that upward direction from falling to newer lows, but it's still helping the market rise up. And even though the S&P 500 index is rising several points, there are individual ticker symbols rising up. Like I said, 30 cents to $3. Check out the video. I go into more detail. I don't want you guys to miss out on this great information. Click on it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And let's make some money.